Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. It is good to have you here. A special welcome to those of you that are joining us online. We are in the Gospel of John today, and we are in the, we're, we're, we're continuing what we call this bread of life cycle. So we're going to be talking a lot about bread in the next uh, few weeks. Um, but there's something else I'm going to talk about in the, in the sermon this morning. So I'll, I'll wait until we, we, we get there. But let us uh, begin with our confession and forgiveness that is, as it is found in the bulletin. I would invite the congregation to please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your words. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life. You are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The first reading is from the 16th chapter of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instructions or not. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, it is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading comes from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does, this, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming, but speaking the truth in love we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. According to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. 
When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. And please be seated. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Welcome to bread season in the church. We, this is the second of five Sundays that the lectionary assigns John 6, where Sunday after Sunday we hear about this bread of life. And it really becomes a bane for preachers who have to preach in August Week after week, we have to talk about bread. And I love bread. (laughs) I eat too much of bread. But, you know, five weeks of bread might get a little stale. So this week, I'm also going to lift up another word that we have in the gospel this morning. It is the word seal. Not the marine mammal, but seal as in the stamp of approval. Verse 27, For it is on the Son of Man that God the Father has set his seat. Friends, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. That seal, that stamp of approval, every time I hear that word, I think of our adoption process. When we had to adopt uh, Sarah and Hannah, we had to prepare a dossier. And a dossier is a file of documents basically to prove that we were who we said we were. And so there was uh, uh, our birth certificates, our marriage certificate, a police clearance, a medical clearance, proof of residency. I have to look here at all we had to do. It's been a long time ago. Uh, Proof of employment, uh, proof of our assets, in addition to all of the immigration documentation. And that was a, a, a challenging task in itself, but then we had to have each document notarized, and then it had to be state certified, and then it had to be authenticated by the Chinese council, consulate. Uh, so each step is kind of authenticating or giving their stamp to the step before. And of course, with each step, there were fees involved, <laughs> and there was time that was spent. And I think our dossier by the end was about that thick for, for both of our girls. But we needed it because it was that final seal that final stamp by the adoption authorities that gave their approval that Dale and I could be good parents. They approved the adoption. 
Well, I thought of that this week when I thought of uh, Jesus. And you know, Jesus never had a birth certificate, I don't think. And I know that Jesus didn't have any paperwork to prove that he was who he said he was. And because of that, in John's Gospel, John gives us the I am statements. The I am statements are Jesus revealing who he is. And it begins with I am, of course, that is the name of God, Yahweh. Go back to Moses and the burning bush when Moses asks, you know, who, who are you? Who is this? And God answers with his name, I am who I am. So I am. But then in John, there is added, uh, well, added information, for lack of a better term, to help us understand who Jesus is. I am the light of the world. I am the living water. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. These I am statements in John authenticate Jesus' identity. It helps us understand who Jesus is, proves what he said he was. And today we have uh, another of the I am's. I am the bread of life. And with that, here we have verse 27, for it is on him, again, on the Son of Man, that God the Father has set his seal. And so these I am statements are, are really God giving his stamp of approval to Jesus. It is the full revelation of Jesus, the full revelation of the incarnation, the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us. It helps us know who Jesus is. And yet, there is misunderstanding. Throughout the Gospel of John, there is misunderstanding when we come to these I am statements, as Jesus speaks these I am statements, first to the woman at the well, I am the living water. But the woman at the well at first doesn't understand what Jesus means when he says, you're never going to be thirsty again when you drink of this water. The man born blind in chapter 9, remember Jesus gives sight to the man and Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But the man doesn't quite understand how sight is more than just seeing what is directly in front of him. And then, of course, there's the religious leaders with the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. And they don't really understand what Jesus is saying about that. And we can go beyond the I am's to characters in the Gospel of John who just don't get what's going on. Nicodemus. When Jesus says, you have to be born again, you have to be born from above, and Nicodemus goes, what in the world is that about? Pontius Pilate, when Jesus says, I am the king of the Jews, Pilate is as confused as anybody, and even Jesus' own disciples, as Jesus speaks about being the Messiah, they really don't get it. Until Pentecost, when they're filled with the Spirit and the book of Acts, but that's what's happening now in our gospel today with this I am statement where Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Those who eat of this bread will never be hungry again. And the crowd who hears Jesus say this, they don't really get what Jesus is saying. So, well, who is this crowd? Well, it's the 5,000, the 5,000 from last week, who were fed with the five loaves and the two fish. And they understand that they were a part of a miracle. They understand that this was a sign from God, this event that they were a part last week. So much so that when Jesus leaves, they, they go out looking for him. And that's how the gospel begins today. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were beside the sea, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. There's this sense of urgency. 
They are looking for the right person, but for the wrong reason. Because what they are looking for is more food. <laughs> Give us a little bit more of this, uh, this, this miracle, Jesus. Show us a little bit more of, of what you are about. But there's more happening here than just satisfying their physical hunger. And, and Jesus says as much. Very truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. You see, the signs in John's Gospel are not the ends, okay? You know, Jesus' mission was not to turn water into wine at the wedding of Cana. I mean, that's not why Jesus came to this world. Just like Jesus' mission was not to give sight to the blind man. I mean, he did, but that was not the core of his mission. I mean, we could say the same of Lazarus, the raising of Lazarus. That was not the mission of Jesus. And just as the feeding of the 5,000, this was, this was not the end. This was not the reason why Jesus came. They are merely means to the end. They are signs to authenticate Jesus' identity, to help us understand Jesus is who he says he is. They point to the full revelation of God, the full revelation of abundance, the abundant wine at the wedding at Cana was not just about wine for the party. It was a sign of the abundance of God's grace. So too today, or last week, with the, with the feeding of the 5,000. You know, that wasn't a sign just to, to feed the people. It was to speak about the abundance of God and what God can do with, with small amounts to feed not only our, our bodies, but to feed our souls and to feed this world. And so here's the deal. And what I take from the gospel this morning is that both for the people in the gospel and really throughout John's gospel, and for us who hear about this miracle, we can't keep it at face value. Because if we do, then we're really not getting it. Like everybody else in John. There is more that is being revealed. And I think the problem with this is that too often we ask too little of God. The crowd asks, you know, today, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus' you know, response is, do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life. And then drop down to verse 29, because now we get to the real purpose, and it's the purpose of the Gospel of John, uh, where Jesus answers them, this is the work of God, so that you may believe in the one who, let's see, let's look at this again, so that you may believe in him whom he, whom God, has sent. It's about believing in Jesus. All of Jesus. It is an invitation to see what Jesus can do, but then to be drawn in to see that this life of faith is about adopting a new way of life, a new way of being in the world, a new way of showing up in the world where our lives are not based on our desires or our wants or on the ways of the world. But by following Jesus, we seek again to adopt this way of loving one another as Christ loves us, of serving one another as Christ has served us, as forgiving one another as we have been forgiven. Think of it not so much that we come to Jesus to be fed, but we come to Jesus to be able to feed. 
to feed the world. And when we can give of ourselves, the paradox of the Christian faith is that this emptying is really a filling. And that's what Jesus is talking about with this bread of life. The bread of life that endures forever. We understand what our deep desire is. And our deep desire is to show up in this world for Christ. Well, we, every Sunday, we, we ask what the crowd asked this morning. Sir, give us this bread always. We, we ask this in the Lord's Prayer, right? Give us this day our daily bread. Have you ever stopped to think, well, what are we really asking for? Are we just asking for a loaf of bread? Or is there something more that we're asking for in this prayer? Luther helps. Luther expands uh, this understanding of bread being more than just a nice hard roll, but to really speak about all that nourishes and all that we need. In the small catechism, I don't know if you still have it memorized, the, the meaning of the fourth petition. I, ha I have to look, so don't feel bad if you don't, re if you don't remember it. But it's a quite a list that Luther gives us. Okay, you know, what is meant by daily bread? Uh, nourishment for our body, such as food, drink, clothing, shoes, house, farm, fields, livestock, money, property, I have to take a breath. An upright spouse, upright children, upright members of the household, upright and faithful rulers, good government, good weather, peace, health, decency, honor, good friends, faithful neighbors, and the like. What Luther is describing here really is the good life, right? I mean, if, if, if we receive all that, he, that Luther writes there, you know, I, I think we can say that our life is blessed. But in the Gospel, Jesus and John take that next step. And I wonder if even Luther is asking for too little in his explanation to this petition. Is there something more? Maybe we can say in the prayer, at least for today, give us this day our daily bread of life. In other words, give us Jesus. You know, like the spiritual, give us, I think it's give me Jesus, but give us Jesus. The gospel today takes that deeper step into the faith where it's not about me and my desires, but it's about us and the greater good for all the world. I mean, I teach in confirmation class that this petition does not say, give me this day my daily bread. It says, give us this day our daily bread. I think we ask too little of God. I ask too little of God. Too often my prayers, sometimes I focus just on me. And today God is saying, no, expand those prayers. You know, Jesus is more than a caterer providing a meal. Jesus is more than a wedding uh, What's the, what's the wine? Sam you know? You know, you know, you know, you know, Jesus is more than that. If that was all Jesus was, he wouldn't need God's stamp of approval. Jesus is the Son of God. And so Jesus needs to be authenticated. And so we have these I am statements that are means to the end, which will lead us eventually to the cross and the empty tomb. Here is the full revelation of God through Christ's death and resurrection. Death and resurrection. And so this day, ask more of our God. Do not limit God to your own world because God so loves all the world. We can share in the abundance that is God, so that all may receive this food that endures.
for eternal life. our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Bread of life, you teach us to put away bitterness and anger, and with tender-hearted kindness, to share the fruit of our labor with the needy. Strengthen us by your grace, that in communion with you, we may forgive one another and live in love as Christ has loved us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bread of life from heaven, you feed us. Fill all who hunger with needed nutrition and open our hearts to eliminate hunger in this world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy God of all creation, you are the source of all life where the sun blazes hard and strong, bring a gentle breeze. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for openness, that God will open our minds and hearts to recognize the manna that God sends into our lives and into the lives of all, to give us courage now to utilize this to help feed the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for a spirit of understanding that Christ will free us from narrow thinking and help us to take on the mind of Christ so that we may see and understand God's vision for all the world. Hear us, O God. We pray for a deepening of trust in God's providence that we may live in the present and be freed from the compulsion to hoard or stockpile. Hear us, O God. We pray for grace to be satisfied, that we may appreciate all the blessings and opportunities that God has given us, rather than complain about that which we do not possess. Hear us, O God. We pray for all who are sick in body, mind, or soul. We lift up this day Phil, Enid, Mary Ann, Bobby, Marilyn, we lift up all on our prayer lists and those who we now name before you. Hear us, O God. Redeeming God, we give you thanks for the lives and witness of your saints now departed. Bring your beloved into eternal glory opening wide the gates to the heavenly banquet. We name the saints of our lives. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ now be with you always. We extend God's peace to each other this day. Newman, God's peace. Carl, God's peace be with you. Paul, God's peace. Carl, God's peace be with you. Ruth, God's peace. God's peace. Good to see you. God's peace. 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 Nancy, God's peace be with you.
You have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body, for the life of the world. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for this coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able, we ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and the Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices and pray as Jesus taught, our Father in heaven. That would be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. And so let us come. Thank you. 
to shed for you.
rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship today. Mo Clark and her Girl Scout troop are here to wash your car. Um, I don't know if it's uh, raining or not. I think they're, they're out there washing cars. Um, I, I, even if you don't want your car washed, you can make a donation to her, her group because uh, it's a silver award for Girl Scouts and they are, are uh, or Mo is creating a food pantry at St. Bart's. This is an outdoor, sometimes you see this, that is there 24-7, so you can come and you can bring an item of food and leave it there, and if you need it, you know, at any time of the day or night, you can go and, and, and help yourself. So it's all on the honor system, and uh, she is redoing that pantry. So that's a, you know, it's a, it's a very worthy cause. So uh, go and support Mo uh, today with your... Uh, car or with your donation or both. <laughs> okay, um, speaking of St. Bart's, uh, Kathy Morris took uh, I don't know how many boxes of mac and cheese. I think you saw if you were here last uh, Sunday, uh, there had to be hundreds. <laughs> Good job, Prince of Peace. And, uh, uh, it's, uh, it's just a blessing that we can support and, and your generosity. This month, we're going we're gonna to shift it to backpacks because it is uh, the collection of backpacks for uh, the school children in Trenton, and that will happen, that distribution will happen at their uh, barbecue, summer end barbecue, and I think it's on Labor Day weekend. Uh, the list is on the table. I think it's also um, in the newsletter and on the website, Roberta, as well. So, and, and we ask not just for the items, but for the whole backpack. So you buy the backpack and then you buy the items to go into the backpack. And I think last year we got 30 or so, and we're hoping there's already, um, there were some that we took uh, already uh, with, the, with the mac and cheese. So, uh, but yeah, come and, and, uh, and uh, give of, of, that, of that need. Uh, what else? Dale gave me uh, an announcement for today to save the date, I know it's only August, uh, but she is looking ahead to October 6, which happens to be my anniversary ordination, but that's not what we're gonna celebrate on the 6th. <laughs> we're gonna celebrate the 10th anniversary of the house next door. Can you believe that the house next door is 10 years old? Um, you know, it's, it's that, that ministry started uh, 10 years ago, and so there's a, a big celebration uh, that will include the morning and the afternoon where we hope to bring in some of the uh, House Next Door community that will be in their own churches on Sunday uh, morning, but they can come and be a part. But they'll, you'll hear more about that. But if you're interested in helping plan, uh, there will be a meeting next Sunday after church, and Dale will be here, and uh, you can be a part of the planning of that but for, the, for the time being, October 6th. Uh, reserve on your calendar. What else? I think that's all I have. Uh, Nancy, and Nancy will bring you a microphone. Nancy? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, I think this past week we put, sent about 70 pounds of produce over to St. Bart's. So the garden is thriving. We have a lot despite the groundhogs and despite some other infestations, but we could really use some more help. So if you're free anytime Tuesdays or Friday mornings, that'd be great. We've had people that moved away that you know were a big help there before. Another team that needs some help that we've also lost a lot of members for people moving away is the racial justice team. 
and we will be meeting Tuesday night. We meet from 7 to 8.30 on Zoom. You can get that, uh, the information from me or Nancy Harrington will be setting up the, the Zoom uh, link. And this week we are planning for the refugee welcome picnic that's on September 8th. So as I said, we have a small team, but this is a big project. We're hoping to have many families that are in Mercer County coming here, and we would like to have people help set up, clean up, food donations, goodie bags, all kinds of things. So there'll be more details coming out later on the week, but Tuesday night is the planning meeting if you'd like to come help with that or just join the racial justice team. Okay, thank you, Nancy. Are there other announcements for the good of the church? If not, uh, oh, Joan? I want to mention that we're not having the guests next week. Uh, next Sunday, there was going to be a pulpit exchange where the Reverend Marguerite we was going to come from First Montclair, and it was going to be for our Reconciling in Christ series. And she was going to be a guest preacher and I, I maybe lead an adult forum. She has a, a conflict and, and cannot do that. So you're stuck with me next week. <laughs> uh, it, but it will be rescheduled for a later date in the fall. And I think maybe in the fall it will be better. Um, just, you know, it'll be more, more of us around. So, so yeah, don't, uh, you're, you're going you're gonna to have me next Sunday. <laughs> I hope you're not disappointed. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for that uh, reminder, Joan. Let us now stand for the benediction. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.